basketball fans, it's me, DC, here for Fantasy Basketball Analyzer to help you get ready for week six of the NBA season. Week five was a little grueling. We had a lot of injuries here at the end, which will help when we talk about the waiver wire. But first, let's break down the schedule. And we do that how we always do it. We start about talking about pace and defensive efficiency. You can see the numbers right here. The pace is per ESPN's old PER page. Defense efficiency is coming from cleaning the glass with the cutout garbage time. I want to give them credit where it's due whenever I pull those numbers. So up top, teams in the green are the teams that are playing the fastest and or with the worst defense. We use that combo to see who we want to go after. So you want to play against San Antonio, Detroit, Houston, Sacramento, Denver, Golden State. I don't think it's too shocking. The Knicks, just outside that range, Indiana, right? This all makes sense. Teams you want to stay away from. Clippers, Dallas, Milwaukee, Philly, Cleveland. And then Portland still hanging in there. Strong defense, surprisingly strong defense, especially considering what Portland has been in prior years. But also their pace is just a little bit slower, which isn't what I would expect. So we take these and we go ahead and apply them to the week six preview, which you'll see right here. So it's important to know that this week we've got three teams with only two games. We got Charlotte, we got Houston, we got Toronto. So you want to be careful there, especially if you're in weekly lock league. They're basically useless. And then on top of it, you look at something like Charlotte, where their two games happen to be Wednesday and Friday, and we'll talk about this later, but those are really low or high volume days. Those are not good quality days to get them. So Charlotte is not going to be a good pickup. So we start talking about waiver. If you want to take a look at next week, just be ahead of it. Miami only has two games next week. So just be aware of that. There are no games th this Thursday at all because in America, that's when we celebrate Thanksgiving. So NFL gets that day. NBA takes the day off. That's what it is. If we talk about back to backs, there's a few teams coming in with a Sunday-Monday back-to-back, but by the time you're watching this, Sunday's probably already happened. Those games have already started. I'm watching some right now. You can't see it off screen. So Tuesday, Wednesday, there's a good chance to tackle some of them. Then Friday, Saturday, but really I find the only one that's super interesting is if you're trying to make a single pickup is look at Dallas towards the end of the week. They've got the Saturday-Sunday back-to-back. They're the only team that does have that, and those are both lower-volume days. So if you can scoop up someone from Dallas and put them in your lineup, You'll get a little more use out of that than you will from other spots. And I touch on quality games a little bit. If we look here at the bottom, Monday, there's eight games. Tuesday, there's four. So that's great. Wednesday's 12. Friday's 14. So anyone who's picking up off waivers on your bench is probably not getting in your lineup. Those are really loaded days. Saturday is four. Sunday is nine. So it's not a great move. You know, quality-wise, you've got 18 teams playing. So you might not have a lot of room to get people off your bench. But it's still doable. It's not nearly as bad as the 12 and 14. So Monday, Tuesday, you want to attack Saturday, Sunday. You have got the extreme ends of this week. So plan accordingly. You want to make a pick up here to start off your week. And no one has a back-to-back -back for that Monday, Tuesday that you can utilize. So pick up someone or stick with what you've got and then pivot for the end of the week. With that established, I think a lot of the pickups might this week might not really be about how their schedule looks. I try to factor that in to give you the most bang for your buck. But there were so many injuries, I feel like some of the names are obvious, and maybe you already know this. But if you haven't been following it, because you aren't keeping up with all the games, that is what I'm here to help out with. So, Jaws out, he's considered week to week, and Bane's out for the Grizzlies. In the past, when Jaws been out, Ty Jones has been great. He picks up as a point guard. I don't know if the numbers are totally showing it, although it could have a good showing tonight against Brooklyn. Kyrie's coming back. We'll see how those numbers look, but the game's just starting, so I don't know yet. I would say definitely pick up Tyus Jones. He's 52% rostered. He's available about half a leagues. You might get a good stretch of him. In fact, what I'm looking at right now, he's up 24% just because of the jaw injury. So the story's out, but he's still available in half a leagues. A little more scoring. So if you want it for a points league or category league, Shake Milton, people are really excited. You know, Maxi looks like he might miss some time here. I don't know how long yet. Harden was already out. So Shake Milton's going to get more of an opportunity. You know, Melton or someone is probably already rostered in most leagues. Let's see if I can bring up that number real quick right here. Yeah, he is rostered in 67%. So you could also look at Melton if you want to, but Shake's a more available. He's only rostered in 31% of leagues. So you can go out there in 70% of leagues, pick up a guy who's going to get strong usage. If we look at his last game, three three-pointers, 27 points, six rebounds, two assists. Good percentages here. I like him more in a points league than a category league, but I think he's useful either way. I mean, if you're going to do 27 and 6, great. Go for it. You pick him up and you ride with him as long as he's got the extra playing time. Jumping back to the Grizzlies, I probably should have said this. I would also look at John Conchar's 20% rostered, so you can give him about 80% of leagues. 
Last game, he had 19 and 10 with five three-pointers. So you get a little forward eligibility out of this because a lot of the guys I was talking about were guard. Or if you need even a big, not a shocking new name, but Santi Aldama, it's different now because Triple J is back, but Triple J also is still going to be resting as he's just coming back from that leg injury, right? So he'll still get some plays last game. Santi had 15 and 7, three three-pointers. It was against OKC, so that's pretty nice. I think it'll be inconsistent, but if you do need a power forward center, I think you can go for it. They do have three games this week, only one on the streaming day. But there are some minutes to spare for Memphis right now, so I think any of these guys have a chance to give you a little more upside than you might normally expect. Sticking with the power forward position, you could give Torrey Craig a look for the Suns. He's getting some extra time right now because campaign is out. Nope, not campaign. Cam Johnson. Cam Johnson is out for the Suns right now. So... He's getting like 25 minutes. It's not crazy. 14, 4, and 3 last game. 16, 6, and 2. 13, 10, and 2. I like him more in category league than a point league. I don't think he's really going to explode for you, but I think he's a really solid option here. The nice thing is that he's only 23% rostered, so he's available in 80% of leagues, give or take. 77, if we want to be specific about it. He's only got three games this week, but two are on the good streaming day. So if you pick him up, you can use him this week, maybe a little more than some of the other options I talked about, just based on the scheduling. But I definitely think you're going to get more of a punch if you can grab Shake or Tyus or someone like that. And then sticking with injury options and stuff like that, I think I mentioned Killian Hayes a couple of weeks ago, but Kate Cunningham is out. We're worried that he's going to be out for a long time because it looks like it's stress fracture indefinitely out. So Killian Hayes, 43% rostered. Last game, he had 18, 2, and 9 with a steal and a block and four three-pointers. Right now, as of recording, he's playing Sacramento, so I don't know how that's going to go. I would scoop up Killian Hayes because he might be helpful as a long-term ad if you don't like the percentages because that can be a little hit or miss with him. If I go back two games, he only hit 12% from the floor. Then maybe give Alec Burks a look. On Yahoo, Burks has point guard, shooting guard, and small forward eligibility, which is nice. He's not starting with Kate out, but his minutes are up. Last game, he had 23, 3 3 and a steal. Before that, though, he only had 6 2 and 2. Before that, he had 15 2 and 2. So I'm not sure that I would count on the 23 every night, but I do think it's worth a look. Rostered in 19% of leagues, so you can get them in about 81% of leagues. So these are guys that you can really go for in deeper leagues that should get some extra minutes. Otherwise, a lot of the names that are out there are people we've talked about in prior weeks. You know, you can still look at Bruce Brown. Denver doesn't have a great schedule. He's playing all right, but maybe he's a little inconsistent. I'm really focusing my energy on where the players got hurt. I want these the spike potential for these extra minutes. If you have anyone else that you're curious about, leave a question down below or hit me up on Twitter. Happy to answer your comments or trades or anything like that. Hope week five went well for you. You know what I want you to do? Go out and win your week. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, please hit the like button and leave a comment down below. It helps me grow the channel. If you want more videos like this, hit subscribe or even the little bell will give you alerts. And I'll be back soon with another video for you.